Hello again, everybody. We are live here in our aquarium for yet another Z learning feature right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo and I have to admit this is a pretty special day here at Riverbanks. Not only did we go live at 10 a.m. in our animal hospital, but now we are live yet again here in our aquarium for a very special feeding session. In fact, you might see a little bit of commotion behind me. Here in a second, our senior aquarist, you've actually met her before, Kendra, is gonna be swimming around the corner, all geared up, of course, to be underwater with our coral reef residents. And we're gonna get a very up close view. It's gonna be me and all of you. That's why my mask's, mask is down right now, because we're gonna do a very special Z learning feature where you all get to enjoy your lunch break with their lunch break. They're gonna be eating along with all of you today. So keep your questions coming. It's nice to see all of these familiar faces. Stevie, thanks for tuning in again. Piper, hello. Oh, it's good to see Caitlin as well. Nice to see all of you again. Thanks so much again for joining us for our second feature today. This is the first time ever that we've gone live twice in one day, let alone three times by this afternoon. But you can see a whole lot more fish coming up behind me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around this camera because you don't wanna see my face, you wanna see all the action behind me. Let's go ahead and turn it around. All right, everybody, we have Kendra coming in hot. Look at her, she has a whole big school of fish following her today. Hopefully y'all can get a great view of this. Now, right now we're looking at our Indo-Pacific coral reef habitat here at Riverbanks. Now this habitat is about 55,000 gallons of recreated salt water. In fact, if you check out our caption today, you'll know that recreating that salt water is no cheap endeavor. It is a very expensive process to replicate these natural habitats for our residents. But y'all are getting in a front row view. Lisa was wondering what type of coral is it? Lisa, that is such a good question. I know right now we're kind of focused on what Kendra's doing and feeding out all these different beautiful fishes that are joining us. But the coral reef that you actually see behind Kendra, and that's kind of this whole habitat, is actually replica coral. It was completely made by humans to replicate this environment. That way we could focus on the health and well-being of our other residents here in this area. Now, of course, we have live coral elsewhere, but in here, it is all replica. Now, you notice that Kendra just spread out, it looked like a little bit of shrimp. And now we're doing some of our other algae bites as well. I have to point out this big individual though, right here in center camera. This is our high fin snapper. He's actually one of our longest residents here at the aquarium. In fact, he has been here at Riverbank since 1993. Hard not to mention him, especially when he's such a large individual right here in a great view. But here in this habitat, specifically in this coral reef that replicates that kind of Southeast Asian environment, we have herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores, which means everybody's eating quite a bit of everything. So there's some plant matter that consists of ingredients like kelp and algae and other plants, but then carnivores that are gonna eat the krill, shrimp, and other fish even. Don't worry though, not the fish that they're living with, of course. We make sure that everyone is fed a hefty diet, not too much, of course. We don't want anyone to be overweight here in the aquarium or at riverbanks, but we make sure that Everybody is well fed, so that way they are only concerned about the diet that Kendra brings. Now Kendra today actually has quite a few friends right at her knees. She's hanging out at the bottom part of our habitat, and we have quite a few of our bamboo sharks that are hanging out down here. Now most of them that you see are actually our white spotted bamboo sharks, and they are adult size. That's actually all the bigger those individuals will get. But Kendra has actually some fish inside our, some of our pre-provided fish diet. Um, that she'll be feeding out to those individuals. Now, Kendra has her hands full. This is a part of our normal routine. We do this every single day, whether we are open or closed to the public, actually. And right now, she is trying to feed out all those different individuals to make sure that everybody is getting their fair share. It does look a bit like a feeding frenzy, but I promise Kendra's a professional. Like I said, she's one of our, she's our senior aquarist which means that she knows all these individuals very, very well. Okay, out of the corner of my eye, I just caught another individual. Take a look at center stage. Do you see all those spots? That is one of our honeycomb moray eels that typically don't come all the way out during our feeding session, but they must have known that today was a special day for Z learning today, especially on Midlands Gives. Quick, while Kendra is doing all of our feeding action, I have to give you an update. Since we last talked, we have now 
almost surpassed our original goal. We have now have raised more than $15,000 to benefit riverbanks to be a part of our general fund to help us care for these amazing animals that you're looking at right now, in fact, and to also take care of all the behind the scenes work. Like I mentioned, things like salt or all the equipment or even the food that we're feeding them is not cheap. Of course, it's high quality. We don't provide the highest quality of care to them. So that $15,000 has made a huge difference. In fact, it has motivated us. We went ahead and increased our goal for the day. Instead of being a $20,000 goal, we have a $40,000 goal because we are just getting started. Midlands Gives last all the way until midnight tonight. And we think that we can go ahead and reach that goal of $40,000 to support riverbanks. Now, all the questions that are coming in, y'all keep them coming. Once again, we have our teammates from the rest of our communications department to make sure to kind of chime in and answer all these different questions. So Faith was wondering what kind or how many different types of fish do we have in here? Well, inside of this specific habitat, we have about a hundred different individual residents and those represent about 50 different species. Now, all of these species that you see right now are what we consider to be Indo-Pacific, which means that they'd be found anywhere from like the Great Barrier Reef to those Southeast Asian islands around Indonesia in the Pacific area of those coral reefs. Oh, April asked a very great question. Do the sharks bite? Well, the sharks do have mouths, which means that they absolutely can, but thankfully, Kendra actually has not only her wetsuit on, her mask on, her, all of her equipment so that way she's able to breathe underwater, but she also wears protective gloves too. Because even if the sharks don't necessarily mean to, she is hand feeding those individuals, making sure that everybody's getting their fair share. So of course she wears that protective material, but of course our sharks are way more concerned about eating the fish than they would be her fingers. Hopefully you caught that eel that just grabbed the snack. It's trying to swim away. What a great view, that was perfect. <laughs> Now, it might surprise you, but Kendra actually can see us. So she did a big wave when she came on over today. But right now we're doing a great job of social distancing through this acrylic here today. Let me go ahead and scroll through some else of these comments. Y'all are sending them in. This is fantastic. It's so great to see all 300 of you joining in. Marie was wondering how many times a day do our fish get fed? Well, these residents specifically in this area, this is their main daily feeding. And when we're typically open to the public, the time is right around 12.30 when we do this feeding. But we do do some other broadcast feedings here in the area, of course, to kind of encourage foraging behaviors. And sometimes other individuals have a select diet where they're fed at a different time. Oh, I have to give a shout out. You just saw that blue tang, that Pacific blue surgeon fish that's swimming right here in front. Those of you at home might recognize it more as a dory fish. Yes, sometimes we call them dory fish, but of course, more formally, they are Pacific blue surgeon fish. Let's go ahead and scroll through the rest of these questions. Y'all are getting such a great view as Kendra continues to feed out all of our different aquatic residents here in this habitat. Naomi, what a great observation. You were wondering why the sharks are hanging out near the bottom. That's actually where they're adapted to feed from. So not only do they spend pretty much exclusively their entire lives kind of hanging out on the bottom of coral reefs. They're actually what's known as kind of a bottom feeder in the sense that they're adapted, their mouths are kind of underneath their heads where they are specifically made to eat at the bottom of that water column. So of course here at Riverbanks, we kind of recreate that. Kendra's getting on their level instead of during the broadcast feed, she's actually feeding them down towards their level of where the bamboo sharks like to hang out. <laughs> Chris, you're absolutely correct. We do feed all the different species kind of different things. Of course, there's a lot of overlap in diet, um, just as there would be out in the wild as well. They're going to eat kind of similar diets. But like I mentioned earlier, we do have individuals that just eat plant matter, that just eat meat matter or are carnivorous, or some that eat a little bit of both or omnivores, which means they're a little bit more opportunistic and kind of eat just about anything. Elliot, since you were wondering what they're busy eating here this afternoon, it's a mix of sliced up seafood that's actually prepared for them specifically here at the zoo. They also were fed some 
fish gel, which is actually made in-house right here at Riverbanks. And that fish gel includes a little bit of algae, some kelp, and kind of like a gelatin sort of matter. So that way we're able to easily feed it underwater. Y'all are sending in such great questions. Gabby was wondering about the fish's name. Some of our individuals do have names, like Skipper right up here, that hyphen snapper. Now, not all of our fish, of course, are named. When I said that we have a hundred different individuals, that is a whole lot of different fish to keep track of. But don't worry, they all have their own identification numbers. That way we're able to identify individuals and give them that specialized care, of course. Madison, I am so glad that you're loving Z Learning. And thanks for joining us here at our 12 o'clock feature today here in our aquarium. Kendra's giving us a big wave goodbye. She's gonna be heading on out. Now, of course, Kendra, as we know from our other Z Learning features, she takes care of lots of different aquarium residents. We'll go ahead and kind of follow her on her way out here today. We met her when we were talking about our sea turtle journey, but then also when we went behind the scenes and learned about our rescue coral from our Florida reef track. But even though Kendra went to head on the other side of our habitat, we are still joined by quite a few of our different individuals right here in front. So keep sending on in those questions. Y'all are asking such great ones. Let me go ahead and scroll through, see if I can find some. <laughs> we just got a comment in from Reagan. I have to give Reagan a shout out. My favorite talk to give. Absolutely, Reagan. We miss being open to the public so, so much. We cannot wait to reopen. And of course, we will keep all of you updated when that is possible and when we can do that in a safe manner for not only all of our animal residents, but of course, all of our guests and our staff members as well. We promise to keep all of you updated and you will hear it from us first. Now, as we're kind of hanging out with the rest of our fish that are swimming around over here after our feeding session, being able to maintain this habitat here at Riverbanks, like I said, is no inexpensive thing. And in fact, it is a very expensive process to recreate a habitat like this in a saltwater environment right here in Columbia, South Carolina. In fact, every single year we spend anywhere from 20 to $23,000 just on purchasing salt to recreate that saltwater environment. Now that alone, every single year, we spend about $17,000 just to actually feed all of our residents in our aquarium and reptile complex. So this is a whole lot of animals, more than the ones that we're just seeing today. So your donations matter today for Midlands Gives. So I encourage you all to click the link here in our caption that'll send you to midlandsgives.org backslash Riverbank Zoo. And you can donate live time today because we have a big goal to reach, of course, to support our mission here at Riverbanks and to take care of all of our amazing animal residents. Now, of course, we're not gonna see all 2,000 plus animal residents today, but we are gonna get a great view here underwater with our aquarium residents. I wanna say a big thank you all so much for joining us today underwater for a quick lunch break. Of course, while we dive into our aquarium, into our coral reef, let's see if we can kind of take a peek at some, a little bit more action. There's Kendra again. She's over on our other side of our coral reef area, still feeding out some of our other individuals too. But today, as you know, I mentioned earlier today, this is not our last feature for the day. In fact, we have one more feature later on this afternoon, actually at two o'clock this afternoon, we are going to go inside of our habitat with our American alligator for a quick afternoon snack session. So we're gonna to get to see very unique views here at Riverbanks. But I have to say, this is probably one of our most relaxing views that we have here at the zoo and garden. And I thank you all so much for joining us today. Let's go ahead and see if we have any other questions that I can catch really quick. I apologize if I might have missed one of your questions. Don't worry, we're going to answer them later on today. We have a few different team members that are chiming in, responding to all those different questions because it really does take a village. In fact, you can get a great view of Kendra right through that replicated coral. She's still feeding out all those different individuals. And of course they followed her. They realized that she still had that bucket full of snacks. <laughs> Michelle, if you didn't catch it earlier, we have about a hundred different individual fish here in this habitat that represent about 50 different species that are found in a Pacific coral reef habitat. 
So all these different individuals would actually have overlapping ranges out in the wild, which means that they can safely share space, of course, here at riverbanks. Y'all are getting a great view of some of our trigger fish as they're swimming around. We have one of our bamboo sharks that's still hanging out over here. They must have gotten their fair full share of the feeding this afternoon. Oh, Abby just commented in all this coral that we're looking at. It's a great question. She was wondering, is it real or is it replica? Well, we have a little bit of both, but right now what we're looking at is replica coral. So it was all specifically designed here for riverbanks to recreate this coral reef environment. But we do have real living coral, which believe it or not, is an animal species that we actually care for both behind the scenes and in some of our other smaller habitats here in the aquarium. You can still see Kendra's hanging out over on the far side. Looks like she's heading on up to resurface here this afternoon. But right now we're looking at our replica coral. That's a part of our Indo-Pacific coral reef habitat. Y'all have been sending in such great questions. We appreciate it so, so much. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera. I wanna give you a, a big, huge thank you for joining us for our coral reef feeding this afternoon. Now Midlands Gives is a big day for us, not only here in the area of South Carolina, right in the middle of the state and at Riverbanks, but today is also Global Giving Tuesday. So if you go ahead and click on the link here in our caption, it'll send you directly to a page that you can donate to help support these animal residents and our mission here at Riverbanks to not only create connections, inspire actions, but impact conservation. And even though we're doing it virtually this year, we hope all of you feel connected to our amazing animal residents and can help us to make a difference. So click that link, join on in to support those local nonprofits right here in South Carolina. And remember, set your alarm clocks for two o'clock this afternoon because we're gonna go live again for our third and final feature from our alligator habitat. Thank you all so much for joining us underwater and we'll see you at two.